Hey, what's up? We got to get the microphone clipped. You know, no matter how many times I do this, still something. We'll look professional here. We'll go through the shirt. Nothing like starting a video by putting your mic on. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining. This is awesome. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We see, I see so many pumped people here. Hello from Missouri. Ooh, what's up, Kelly? Oh, man. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Um, Vanya. Hey, where's everyone tuning in from today? I am here in Arizona. I'm with my mom and my stepdad. I'm at their place uh, for a couple of days here. So my mom, she's actually watching from the other room right now. Um, so I hear, this is funny, I hear the audio delay from a few rooms over, um, but I love it. I love it. I'm so pumped. We have got people here from Kenya, Gemma from the Philippines. Awesome. Keith from Ireland. What? Dude, welcome everyone. Norway's in the house. The UK. Akron, the rubber city. Nice. <laughs> Paris, get out of here. Oh my God. Daniela in New York City. Daniela, I'll be in New York City next week, Monday through Wednesday, doing some work stuff, some blog stuff. Um, but shoot me an email if, if you're around, if you got time to meet up, if you want to connect. Um, just Ryan at writeblogger.com. Definitely hit me up if you're if you're in the mood um, for a coffee or something. But uh, North Dakota, yeah, this is awesome. Alberta, Trinidad, oh man, Seattle. Wow, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I'm so pumped to do this. This is the most fun I think that I've ever had with my blog and with my my peeps. So doing this kind of live training stuff, this is where it's at. And I want to start by just sharing with you guys. I want this session to be about you. I'm here with something that I want to show you, something I want to teach, my writing process. However, I want y'all to ask questions that are going to be useful to you. So get the most out of me. I'll be here for an hour. And by the time we wrap up kind of the how I do my writing process section, I want to carve out a bunch of time for Q&A. So I got a bunch of questions emailed me in advance um, that I can start with uh, for people that are going to be joining, some that couldn't join, wanted to watch the recording with answers. Uh, but as soon as you have questions, please start popping them into, into the comments. Um, Andy and I will be here. Uh, Andy's my partner with WriteBlogger, so he'll be present in the chat. He's awesome. He's a great resource. Uh, he'll be able to answer some questions, but he'll he'll flag some for me to answer live too. So I've got questions on my end. I've got a literal note from my mom with questions that she'd like me to answer if I can. Um, so we'll get to it, everybody. Um, so, 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 so happy um, to have y'all here. But let's dive into the main meat of this subject today, what my writing process is. So my intention here is I just want to show you how I go about creating blog content, how I think about it, how I come up with ideas, the ways that I position content to make it more unique, more effective, to encourage it to rank higher in SEO search results and beat your competition. So this stuff, you know, this comes from over 12 years of blogging experience. I've been doing this on my site for that long. I've worked for dozens of different companies and clients throughout the years, and I'm the head of content over at Close. So I put this stuff into action both on my site and at scale, where at Close we're publishing 30 to 50 posts a month. So I get to see a lot of different sides of this equation. So let's hop right on in, everybody. I'm gonna switch to my screen view. And now y'all should be able to see my screen. So here we go. Um, I want to just talk first and foremost about how I like to come up with ideas for content, okay? Now, I'm a human. I'm not immune to writer's block. I'm not immune, immune to being in a funky mood on a random Tuesday where I just don't feel like writing or I don't have inspiration, right? I'm not quite sure what I should blog about. I know I've got, you know, this 
hour or two that I would like to fill with doing something for my blog, but I don't know where to start, right? So oftentimes when I'm in this position of, I'm just not quite sure what I want to start with, I'll come over to my free tools. So these are my forever free blogging tools, just ryrob.com slash tools. You can come here and you'll be able to use this stuff forever. We are not charging for these. Um, my intention with building free tools like this is, hey, this is what I wish I had when I started blogging. So I wanna provide that to everyone else out there too. So I'll come over to my blog idea generator tool. And this is again, you know, when I'm starting from this place of, eh, what should I write about today? I'm not feeling passionate about any particular topic. So I'll just come over to this blog idea generator and in this enter a keyword field here, I'll just type in, you know, usually something really general like blogging. So obviously my blog is pretty much entirely about blogging. Um, so I'll just type in blogging, I'll click generate topics and this AI uh, tool that we built gets right to work. So you can see bunch of different ideas here, blogging tools, how to write headlines, the art of crafting compelling introductions. I actually don't have anything on how to craft compelling introductions. Um, I haven't written about that at all. I've written about increasing blog traffic, uh, monetizing, covered that for sure. Uh, I've never talked about the art of keyword research. I think I've approached that as like a science, but I actually find that really interesting to, to talk about the art side of it because it's for sure a combo of art and science. Um, but yeah, writing tips, storytelling, building a personal brand, overcoming writer's block. That's interesting. Um, understanding blog analytics five ways to promote your blog, secrets of creating evergreen content. Okay, so I liked this um, art of crafting compelling introductions. However, let's just say for the sake of argument that none of these ideas really grabbed me, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll just click the generate more button and the AI tool gets back to work and it starts to come up with more ideas. Sometimes it does duplicate ones, right? You'll see some that that kind of sound familiar here, um, but there will be some that are also different, right? The art of blog post formatting, um, creating an effective blogging schedule. Uh, so this is interesting. Um, creating an effective blogging schedule. Hmm. I don't love the angle of the importance of creating an effective blogging schedule. I agree that's important, but I think the topic of how to create a blogging schedule that works for you is way more interesting to me personally. So when I find something in the idea tool that I like, I'll just click the copy to clipboard button. And now I've got this headline copied, this idea is copied. So usually what I'll do before I start actually um, writing the post or outlining it or perfecting the headline, I just want to take that main keyword phrase, like that root, that core of the topic, um, which is, I lost track of myself here, uh, blogging schedule. So how to create a blogging schedule. And I'll just go ahead and I'll start by doing some keyword research. And again, free keyword tool here on my blog. I'll click the keyword research. And I'll just go over here and we'll type in how, wait, blog schedule, let's be really simple about this. So you could type in something, you know, longer tail, like how to create a blog schedule. Um, and maybe you'll get like more kind of specific curated results. But I like to just do really basic, like top line keyword, like grab the sentiment of the topic, not necessarily obsess over the specific wording. So I'll type in blog schedule, I'll hit go. And the free keyword tool gets to work behind the scenes. And what I'm expecting to see here is a bunch of different ideas and angles and ways that I could approach writing about this topic, blog schedule, and then with some corresponding data about how many people are searching for this term every month and what the difficulty, an estimate of the difficulty that it's going to be to rank for this term. Um, 
And we'll just go ahead, we'll give this some time. Um, often this takes somewhere between 10 to 20, 30 seconds, uh, sometimes um, at the longer side. But if this one doesn't return some results, I've got a backup plan for you. Uh, it looks like it's really, we're slowing down. Um, but what, what Andy and I have noticed with this um, keyword research tool is that sometimes when, when it gets a lot of use, it'll be timed out. So what I've noticed is sometimes I have to jump over to something like uh, the keyword tool version that I have inside of WriteBlogger um, and do something like a search here. Now it's also not guaranteed that this one will produce the exact results I want either because sometimes this one's getting heavily used as well. So this is kind of the, the backup plan and the free tool version should be fully functional um, about 99% of the time. But let's see if we get lucky here. And if not, we're gonna move on to the next stage of my blogging process here. Cool, okay, so we flunked out on this one for today, but let's go back to just the idea, right? So in the idea generator, we talked about blog schedule. Now, when I have an idea, like a raw idea for a topic I wanna to write about, I'll usually first start with a Google search. Once I've done some keyword research, I've verified it, and again, this tool will be functional uh, again later today for sure. I think this is a peak usage time of day right now, but I'll, I'll usually start with kind of this core keyword phrase and I'll just do a Google search. So let's go to Google and let's type in blog schedule. Ah, you see, this is actually really interesting. Just right here, when you hover, when you type in and you hover here, you see the most common searches. Maybe there's some geolocation stuff going on here. Maybe this is US based um, since I'm in the US. But what you can see is the first suggestion, blog schedule template, blogger daily schedule, right? How many blog posts per week for ranking, best blog posting schedule, right? So all four of these right here, these are super rich clues about how you should go about approaching this topic of a blog schedule. So I immediately like really resonate with blog schedule template because I love creating content that, you know, provides value on the page, sure, but where I can give an additional resource to people. Like, hey, here's my free blog schedule template. It's just in a Google sheet, like take this, use it, it's free, and it's gonna help you. So I have, a blog schedule of my own in a Google Sheet template already that I use. So this is the kind of stuff that it's like, wow, this is easy. This is a no brainer for me to make and share with people. So that's kind of where my mind goes first. But again, going back to the start here, just Google search the topic, right? And you're gonna see, we wanna gather insights more than anything, right? And one of my first insights is what's in the featured snippet here, right? So continue reading. Okay, some super simple and easy steps to get started with creating a blog schedule, right? It doesn't say that, but um, I know where that's coming from for sure. You can see some images here. This is interesting. Um, what this tells me in this featured image pack here is that having a pretty graphic that shows something like, you know, one of these two, I think this, this checklist isn't as pretty to me, but this image really jumps out of me with the bold colors. And right here, this image, this one is actually my favorite one, this typical blogging schedule with the, the pink and the red because it's laid out in like an actual calendar looking format. It's really clear. It looks like, oh shit, I'm gonna get some value from this if I click on this image. So there's a lot going on here. Um, you can see again, like template, template free, planner, like these are, these terms are really telling me that the way to approach this topic is, you know, here's how to create a blog schedule, get my free template. That's probably the headline. We'll workshop headlines in a minute, but that's probably the headline I'm gonna go with. Um, and, you know, again, just grabbing some insights here, like these are the kinds of things, the terms that uh, Google's suggesting is important on this topic. So 
brainstorming, prioritizing, setting time limits, staying organizing, not wasting time, right? So what, what gets swooped up into the featured snippet isn't necessarily always the absolute best piece of content um, for, for the topic at hand. And in fact, often cases it's not. But what I find is there's always really, really good insights to be had from taking some time with this. And you know, if we weren't on this limited time session right here, I'd click into this and I'd go look at this post. I'd check out the headings in it. I'd see what kinds of sections they're talking about. Uh, to make sure that when I start outlining my post, I cover these important sections. Now, to keep this train moving along, the people also ask section. Now, this will be present on almost all search result pages. Not all necessarily, but almost all. And what you'll see is basically, these are. this is what Google's saying is the most relevant related questions to the topic you just searched. So in my article on how to create a blog schedule, I'm gonna need to answer these four questions at least, at least, at least. And when you click on one of them, you'll get a bunch more suggestions um, that often populate below. You see some more added to the, to the section based on what I clicked on. So anyway, all of this is to say within your post, you're gonna want like a header three section probably on you know what's a good blogging schedule. And obviously, how do I create a blog schedule? Don't, don't need a specific section on that because that's gonna be the overarching topic of the post. But how many days a week should I blog? That's a huge important question um, that I definitely wanna include in the post. And by the way, the answer to that is however many days you can and you feel like it, right? So I don't think that you should beat yourself up if you're feeling tired, you're not feeling inspired in the mood to blog, even though your schedule says, hey, it's Thursday, you should blog on Thursday. Um, be kind to yourself. You don't have to do it just because it's written on paper. Um, but I like to think of this as kind of, you know, how often should you blog? If you're publishing a post a week, that's incredible. Um, if you're publishing more than that, wow, teach me how you do it. Um, I publish usually maybe once a week tops. Um, sometimes I miss some weeks, you know, life's very full, but that's okay. So anyways, these are the kinds of questions you definitely want to answer in this post. Um, and again, just kind of scanning, looking at the headlines, right? How to plan a blog schedule. That's important. The word plan in here. Uh, not necessarily do I need to use that, um, but could be. Also noting this article is from 2015 and it's ranking number two in organic results for this. So this tells me that this, this search topic is ripe for some disruption. Anytime there's an article that's eight years old and it's ranking really well for a topic, um, wow, yeah, go after that. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, we got some stuff that's newer, right? Um, and then, you know, a bunch of things that are a year or older, um, which is super interesting. Yeah, a bunch of stuff that's older. So my hunch is that, you know, so obviously I'm going to write a post on how to create a blog schedule after this. Um, and I'm going to do this with you guys. My hunch is that this post, when I publish it, is going to get to be ranking number one within a matter of weeks, maybe maybe a month or two, because my site's been around for, for 12 years and has a built-up authority. But this is the kind of topic, too, that um, even if your blog hasn't been around for as long, you have a lot of opportunity to pursue something like this and rank really well with it. But again... Take more note of this. People also ask if there's another one down here. There's a knowledge pack, um, related searches too. Like this is great stuff as well. Blogger daily schedule. That's probably a keyword phrase you want to weave into um, your post. Blogging daily, best blog posting schedule. Yeah, things like this. Um, but that's the, that's the TLDR on getting a feel for the topic. This is what I consider like the art component of this, you know? Um, keyword research is the science. This is the art. What does it feel like this topic deserves? And you can take these clues from what Google's telling you, but at the end of the day, my gut feeling is, hell yeah, I want to give people a template for this topic because that is what I would want if I'm looking for a blog schedule, right? I'm looking for advice. I'm looking for inspiration. Um, but more than anything, 
tell me when I should post in order to succeed with a blog. And oh, by the way, here's a free template you can use to plan out all your posts. So that one's super obvious to me, right? So now what I'm gonna do, once I've got my topic locked, I've done my keyword research, I know that people search for this, um, I know that it's topically relevant to me, to my site, and those are really the three boxes that you wanna check. Number one, do you personally want to write about this topic? Do you feel energized to write about it? If not, why are you gonna write about it? Really think about that, feel about that for yourself because you know, I've had many sites over the years where I write about topics that don't actually energize me and then I burn out on those websites. So keep in mind, number one, do you wanna write about it? Number two, do other people want to learn about it? Is there something that you can provide as far as answers, inspiration, ideas, advice? Um, can you provide value on that topic to other people who want answers for it? So keep all this in mind when you're thinking about whether or not to pursue a particular topic. But let's just, for the sake of argument, say that we've got this, how to create a blog schedule, we're locked and loaded, um, often what I'll do, I'll jump into the outline process from here. Now, sometimes I'll generate an outline just from scratch myself in a Google Doc or directly into WordPress, um, but we built this free outline generator tool to make this kind of stuff easy and make it faster. So we're gonna use this, um, I love it. So you can, again, you can access this blog outline generator just from the ryrob.com slash tools menu, but we'll type in how to create a blog schedule and then we'll hit generate now behind the scenes what we're doing here is we're feeding our AI platform open AI we're feeding it this uh, topic and then it's creating the outline and then boom drops it in for us so blog post outline how to create a blog schedule right this is the topic now Intro, the importance of having a blog schedule for sure. Benefits of, see again, look at this. This outline tool is so good because it, it's going out and it's picking up on the keywords that are important, the framing, the ways that the current top ranking articles talk about this subject. So the word organize and plan, right? These are super important secondary keyword phrases for this topic. Um, and then again, starting by assessing your goals, right? Defining your purpose, who you're writing for, setting realistic goals and objectives, planning your content calendar. Wow, this is a pretty pretty awesome uh, <laughs> outline. Really detailed, I love this. Modern, just the schedule, cool. Wow, this is really good. So now what I'll do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the copy to clipboard button. And we'll go ahead and we'll just add this to a new blog post on my site. We'll do this in real time, everybody. So let's go to posts, we'll add new. And let's just go ahead and drop this, paste it right in. And we'll move this headline up. Cool. How to create a blog schedule. And then again, you know, going to, going to the, headline question. Maybe maybe this headline isn't exactly what I want. I'll just go to my free tools again, if I can type today, um, and I'll use my headline tool. So again, another completely free tool, and we'll just type in how to create a blog schedule. And let's see what we get. Um, oftentimes I find, you know, I have fun writing headlines, so I don't always use this tool, but um, for the sake of showing my process, I often do turn to these things when I'm just, I don't want to think, give me the headline, just give it to me, right? Um, so we can see a bunch of different ways for framing it, which is cool. Finding balance from chaos to order, step-by-step, -step, how to plan, organize. So I like, I like this. I'm going to take, I'm not going to take this exactly as it is, but I really like elements of this. I like the, the term step-by-step. I like that there's plan and organize in here. I like calendar. Like these are all really good 
secondary terms that are related to this overarching topic. So what I do when I'm writing headlines, almost all the time, I Frankenstein the hell out of it. So I'll take elements of this, I'll just copy this, and I'll bring it over here, and let me just paste it right here, and then we've got this to work with. So let's do a little Frankensteining on our headlines here now. So how to create a blog schedule. I want to get the words uh, free blog calendar template like really close in the headline because um, Google will often after you know 55 to 65 uh, characters Google will often kind of snip your headline they'll shorten it for you so I like to have my most important keywords and phrases and terms like up closest to the beginning of a headline. So how to create a blog schedule, free blog calendar template, and then because I'm addicted to really long headlines, maybe I'll do something like colon, step by step. Um, do we like planning or organizing better? Hmm. This is interesting. So when I'm not sure, you know, I, I think right here, I would sub in the word planning or organizing. But right now I'm not super sure. So I'll go back to this search result page and I'll see what are the, the terms that seem like they're doing best, right? So we have plan up here, ranking number two. I don't see, I'm not seeing the word organize anywhere. Um, but I see the word schedule twice here. Blogging schedule, blog schedule. That's a little over-optimized in my opinion. Um, that's probably never going to rank number one. It's like you're going a little too hard on the headline. But I'm going to go with planning. Step-by-step -step planning guide. Cool. So let's lock in our title. This is the title, right? Um, now we've got the outline here. I want to show you guys how I go about just kind of getting a blog post ready. So oftentimes I write in a Google Doc because I collaborate with um, freelance writers who help me to scale my content since I don't have the time to write start to finish that many blog posts anymore. So I often draft in Google Docs where I'm collaborating, where I can share, you know, a Loom video, a recording of, hey, here's my thoughts, my feelings, like here's how we should approach this. Um, so it's a very collaborative process. And my, my writer that I use the most, Allie, is amazing. She's so fun to work with. So she gets me. We've worked together for a long time. Um, but I'll show you what I typically do. I'll copy this headline. And I want to show you just how I go about optimizing my blog posts before we dive into anything writing related. Now, here in the focus key phrase section, this is the Yoast SEO plugin. It's totally free. Um, I don't use the premium or the pro version of it. I never have for my sites and I've never really needed it. So I recommend just the free Yoast because it's pretty damn awesome. They've built a really cool product, um, major props to them. So in this section here, Again, this is WordPress, by the way. Um, highly recommend that you use WordPress for your blog because you'll be able to customize your content in ways that other CMSs can't. So let's go to the key phrase, blog schedule. That was the core, like the root topic that we wanted to, to rank this post for. So when someone Google searches blog schedule, I want to be number one. So you put that in here and what this... SEO, uh, Yoast SEO plugin does is it gives you a bunch of really amazing suggestions and guidelines on how to optimize your content. So I'll paste in my title here, how to create a blog schedule, free blog calendar template, step-by-step -step planning guide. Obviously this is way too long, right? So you can see where, where Yoast suggests Google's going to start dot, dot, dotting me. Um, so that gives me a clue that, hey, for the SEO title, this is way too much. So let's just go ahead and trim that a bit. And there we go. There's my SEO title. That's a pretty good SEO title. And again, when you're thinking through what you want your SEO title, also called a meta title, to be for a post, really get that core 
keyword phrase as close as you can to the beginning. And you know, how to create a blog schedule, free blog calendar template. That's a pretty awesome uh, SEO title. I'm, I'm like, I'm 100% confident that within a month after publishing this post, this is gonna rank number one. I know it will. Um, but something that you could do if you wanted to play around with this, um, you could do something like blog schedule or blogging schedule, how to create a blog calendar, calendar template. So you could do something like that. Um, but I, whoops, I liked the way this was when I did it the first time. So I'm going to grab that and put that back. Now, in the slug section here, this is the URL that you want for the post. You can see up here, um, since this is a draft, I haven't saved it yet. It gives me just kind of a preview URL, but what you want to do with the, the URL, the slug, is you want it to typically be on the shorter side. So really long URLs, they don't look pretty. Um, and oftentimes like they can kind of just confuse people as well. Um, so I like my blog URLs to be short and to be an exact match for my keyword phrase. And what this is telling Google, telling readers is, hey, this URL is about blog dash schedule. So it's sending a really clear message and ranking content high in Google search results is about matching the art and the science of this, but it's also about being consistent in what you're telling search engines your content is about. And this URL is another way to send that message really, really clearly. Now, let's see. So meta description, um, let's say in this guide, we're breaking, where, no, 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 we're, you know, real estate is important here. You only get about 160 characters. So I think we don't even need to say in this guide. Do you need, need a blogging schedule, a blog schedule? Grab my free blog calendar template in this ultimate guide to blog content or blog post planning. I saw the word planning a lot, right? Blog post planning and organizing. Do you need a blog schedule? Grab my free blog calendar template in this ultimate guide to blog post planning and organizing your content. There we go. So again, this is all about getting up to as close as you can to that 160 or so characters where you're gonna be maximizing your real estate and using all these different terms that are going to help make your case for being able to rank higher in search. So obviously you need the term blog schedule in here and getting it as close to the front of the meta description as possible is a best practice. Doesn't need to be, but I find this to anecdotally be very helpful. And again, getting this, this word template in here, getting blog calendar in here, getting the word guide in here. Ooh, we should skip ultimate and do step by step. I like step by step. By step guide to blog post planning. Yep, planning and organizing, super important. And then the word content, also super helpful. So I hate to toot my own horn this much, but this is a really good meta description. Um, and I want to, you know, when we wrap this up here in a few minutes, I want to take your suggestions and also show you how I would approach something. Um, so let's see. Now you can get a little more detailed in your SEO analysis um, in the Yoast. You can look at really specific recommendations. But again, this kind of stuff, uh, the optimization, this usually happens for me after I've written the blog post. So after it gets written, after it gets added in here, that's when I go about the process of optimizing. But you know, for the sake of our demo here today, um, 
We're not going to go deep into the actual writing process here of like the nuance of how I structure sentences and whatnot. Um, but the, I'll save this draft. The, the message I want to impart with you here is that use these free tools to generate outlines, to generate ideas, um, to come up with ways that you can approach a topic in combination with looking at what's already ranking and what you feel a topic should cover. Um, and the last tool that I did want to show you guys was, this is a paid tool. It's called ClearScope. Um, it's, it's not cheap. I think it's somewhere around $170 a month, perhaps, um, for, for 20 reports a month. But this is something that, since I've been blogging for a really long time now, I've come to really love this uh, tool. So it's kind of a, you can think of it as a supercharged Yoast SEO. And what ClearScope does is it goes out, it fetches a ton of information about all of your competitors that are already ranking for this topic. Um, and it'll provide you with these super rich insights. And we'll pop this report open in a second when it's done uh, creating, because I want to show you what this is like. And this is not like an affiliate recommendation. I'm just friends with them, and I just genuinely love, love the tools. I use it for everything. Um, we also use it at close for everything. So great tools, um, but generally speaking, you're going to be good enough with something like a free Yoast SEO. But you know, when your blog starts to grow, you're monetized, let's say, um, so you're generating some revenue. You can afford to spend on some tools. You have a little budget that you want to allocate towards taking your blog to the next level, that's when you come to something like a clear scope, when you're ready to say, all right, I'm getting you know thousands of readers a month already. How do I get tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands? How do I really make that leap to the next level? And tools like this, while they're never the holy grail, they don't do the work for you. They're super helpful along that journey. So let's go ahead and click into the editor. And I'm going to go back to my post here and I'm going to grab the headline. We'll go back to ClearScope. Let me just put the headline in there, make it a heading. Cool. And what we can see is right away um, these terms, blog schedule, blog calendar, template. We're seeing they're highlighted, they're important. And over here in the sidebar, you get all of these beautiful terms that ClearScope is saying, hey, do not publish this post without mentioning these terms. And when you see something with an H next to it, it's a, it's a suggestion <laughs> that you should have that in a header. You should mention that in a header somewhere. And you can see the darker this little icon is next to the H, the more important it is that it's in a header. So having blogging schedule or blog schedule, blogging schedules, in a header is like, a, don't you ever publish on this topic without doing that. And, you know, typical number of mentions to have throughout the article, it gives you suggested guidelines on that as well. But let's just grab this outline. Oops. And we're going to paste all of this in to ClearScope just to get kind of a rough sense of how the free outline tool did as far as generating something that's going to be relevant on this topic. And we can see here that honestly it did a pretty damn good job. Um, now when I'm going through the optimization process and the writing process, I'll plug in this ClearScope report. They have a nice integration with Google Docs and with WordPress. So we can grab this link and we can put this directly into my post here, the little clear scope button, link the report, and then we get all those same insights directly into WordPress. So, God, I promise you guys, this is not an ad for clear scope, it's just that good. <laughs> it's simply too good. Um, but yeah, I, I love this tool, um, and you know, no need to, to go super deep on this for now, we can do tutorials on this kind of stuff later. If you're if you're interested, just leave a comment. Um, and if we see lots of comments that say do a clear scope or do an optimization tutorial, then I'll do it. Um, I'll do this for you guys in the next couple of weeks for sure. But for now, we got about 20 minutes left. So I want to turn this over to something that'll be 
more useful to y'all than just watching me fiddle around in WordPress. So I wanna do some Q&A, let's see here. Let me get back to just, just my face on the screen. Here I am, all right. So I love this process. I love walking y'all through something really clear, um, but I don't think it's an effective use of our time to just watch me write. So I would love to hear from y'all. Um, if you can go ahead and leave a comment um, with a keyword phrase or an idea, something that you're considering blogging about, um, a topic that you're interested in, and maybe you're like, hey, Ryan, how should I approach writing about this? So go ahead. I'll give you all a few seconds. I think there's, you know, there's a little bit of a delay between me and this live stream. So I'll give this a, a little bit of time to run. But go ahead and leave a comment if you want me to check out a topic um, that you would like me to show you how I'd approach blogging about it. And ooh, while we're here, while we're we're just in some dead time right now, this T-shirt, this is this is a shout out to Ahrefs. This is another paid tool um, that when you're ready to take your blog to the next level, um, check out Ahrefs for sure. Great tool set. Um, they just sent me a shirt recently, <laughs> so I had to wear it for this. Wanted to wear it for this. Um, but yeah, let's see. So. Let me scroll the, the comments. Let's see. Um, Wanna, yes, we will definitely leave this video up on YouTube. This will be live at this link. So if you got to run, you can come back, watch it when it's complete. Um, Vanya, oh my gosh, I have so many SEO tool recommendations. Um, if you just go to my blog, ryrob.com, and you hit that search button, search SEO tools, I have an article on my favorite free SEO tools I recommend. So definitely check that out. And let's see. All right, now we're getting some, ooh, we got some good suggestions. Oh man, project management for freelancers. I love that. Traveling to watch wildlife, self-care and motivation niche. Why hire a, co oh my gosh, we have so many good ones. This is amazing. Okay, so Andy was also very excited about wildlife. I'm particularly excited about wildlife. Um, so I'm gonna double click on that, Ariely. Um, we're gonna check out some wildlife real quick. So traveling to watch wildlife. This is super interesting, like really cool angle, first of all. Um, let me switch back over to my screen so you can see what we're gonna do here. So traveling to watch wildlife. With something like this, I wanna start with a Google search actually, because I wanna see Rather than doing keyword research, rather than generating ideas, I want to just see like what in the heck do other people talk about on this topic. So this is cool. This is a really cool search results page. Um, lots of results, right? 1.2 billion results. That tells me, yes, people are wanting um, content on this topic. People search for it. And when you, again, you click into this bar, we got some really good suggestions here. Best wildlife vacations, USA. Wildlife destinations, places to see wildlife. So what I'm getting a really clear picture of here is the word places seems really important to this topic. Um, so rather than publishing a blog post on the keyword phrase, traveling to watch wildlife, what I would lean towards is, you know, X best places to see wildlife in fill in the blank. If you're writing about, you know, in France or in Kenya, in Colorado, um, you know, that is that is kind of my initial hunch of like how I'd want to approach this topic. But just for the sake of argument, let's say um, you're you're in the U.S. You may not be, but just for the sake of this example, let's click on that one to see how the results change. Right. It gets much more specific, less people are writing about it. Um, and you can see, wow, wildlife destinations in the United States. That is incredible. So what Google is doing is Google is really curating this search topic already. So you can choose area even, oh my gosh, like choosing areas that you, know, you frequent, areas that are popular, right? So this is interesting. 
popular tells me that, hey, if I'm going to be writing this about places in the U.S. to see wildlife, maybe I should prioritize California, Florida, Texas. North Carolina seems random, um, but yeah, these three, I'd, I'd say definitely, because they're very popular um, tourism destinations anyway. But back to our topic at hand, places to see wildlife. That's the, the framing for how I'd go about this one. Um, and, you know, beyond this kind of, uh, this way of approaching the topic, you can go super deep into, you know, how to pack for a wildlife vacation, packing tips, um, ways that you can, you know, best places, best cars to rent for a wildlife vacation in Montana. Like I could see lots of different ways and angles you could approach this topic. Um, but let's come back to our suggestions. I want to grab a couple more. Um, Self-care. Okay, we'll do, we have time for one more. We only have 14 minutes left, everybody. Wow. We have time for one more suggestion here. And then I'm going to jump over to some of the, the questions that y'all have been asking and some that were submitted in advance. Let's see. Oh my gosh, so many. Holidays for marketing, Carrie. I love this. How to use holidays to market your business. That's a really fun one. Ooh, on travel mode, best things to do in Washington, DC. Ask Andy about that one. I'm pretty sure he has a post on his blog about uh, things to do in DC. He used to live there and he's an amazing photographer. So definitely check out his blog, um, ihitthebutton.com. Um, you'll get some cool inspiration from him too. But Carrie, I love this. Holidays for marketing. Let's do this one. Um, and again, for this one, like, I don't have an initial hunch that is like, here is the best way to approach this topic. So I would start with the Google search again on this one and then see what we can learn from it. So first and foremost, this is super interesting. Like, uh, Google's doing some some featured snippet stuff here. This is also the kind of term that I would imagine as Google begins rolling out their generative search results, um, that AI in search results, that it'll show those kinds of answers. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad topic to write about. Um, it, it could be a great topic to write about still, and you could still get traffic. But uh, what I take away from this is, again, click this hover here, year, oh my gosh, year's the most important thing about this, right? Almost every single one of these has the year 2023 in it. And you can see social media holidays, um, social holidays, hashtag holidays. So my hunch is that this is really about social media. The framing is going to be social media. And that's, well, that's affirmed by the first result here. Social media holidays for your 2023 um, content, right? That's a good headline. That's a really good headline. And um, no surprise, the HubSpot blog would be ranking number one for that. They're, they're a super high authority site. Um, they can rank really well for almost anything they publish. So it doesn't surprise me that they, they rank number one. However, it's very possible to outrank HubSpot. Um, it just takes time, effort, and, you know, more comprehensive or more unique, more interesting content. But this is, this is some good insights here. Um, Honestly, this this headline it's it's pretty pretty dang perfect. So when I'm thinking about how I'd approach this topic, find the balance between um, getting this post optimized for marketing holidays, this keyword phrase, marketing holidays, and social media holidays. So you know, I would think of something like I mean, 278 seems too ridiculous to me, honestly. So I think that's silly. <laughs> like I. I wouldn't click on that, honestly. It's a little bit too overwhelming for me. So I would think about something more like, you know, 50. 50 social media holidays for, or 50 social media holidays, brackets, 2023 for marketing and content goals. Something like that for marketing and content purposes. So you get the word marketing in there. You get the word social media in there. That's the only room that I see for immediate improvement in this HubSpot headline is that if they had the word marketing in there also, then I think it's effectively a perfect headline. So play around with that. Find something that works in that realm for you. And 
Let's do some Q&A, y'all. We're down to just 10 minutes left together. So let me pop back over here and we'll bring me up to full screen. There I am. Um, and I've got some questions lined up already. Now, if I didn't start with my mom's question first, I'd be in big trouble. So I'm gonna start with one of her questions first. It's a good question, I promise. Uh, she said, when inserting a photo, is it necessary or important to fill in all the blanks in the photo? So she's talking about in WordPress. Do you need to fill in the title field? Do you need to fill in the alt text field? Those are two specific, distinctly separate things. And the answer is yes, you absolutely need to. If you want to help yourself, if you want your content to rank in Google search results, you better fill them out. And with alt text specifically, so title doesn't matter as much, right? Title could be kind of anything. It's ideal if it's descriptive of the image. So if the image is a screenshot of something on your computer that you're showing to people, just call it what the screenshot is. Describe it a little bit. Um, but if it's a stock photo, let's say it's me on my computer, I'll title it, you know, blogger Ryan Robinson writing a blog post or something like that. And for the alt text, you want that to be a little bit different than the title. Um, sometimes if they're matching, that's okay. I do that actually all the time, they match. But alt text, the important message you want to deliver is you're describing to Google and to screen readers. People that are uh, visually impaired, they use screen readers to consume content. And what you're feeding is you're feeding screen readers and Google a description of what the image is. Because Google can't see your image. The algorithms are trying to make sense of what your image is. Maybe that'll change one day. It probably will. But for today, alt text is super important to give people a really clear sense and search, search engines, a really clear sense of what your image is about. So be descriptive, but also, here's the important part. Include your main keyword phrase or a related keyword phrase to the article where the image is gonna be present. So for example, talking about that photo of me uh, on my computer blogging, if I was gonna embed that image in my article on how to create a blog schedule, I would instead call the alt text of that image. I'd say, Ryan Robinson blogging and creating a blog schedule. And maybe if I wanna be crazy, I'll even throw in parentheses, free blog calendar template. Um, you can kind of cross a line and get a little bit into over-optimization territory. And sometimes Google doesn't like that. Sometimes they don't care. Um, but the way that I like to, to think about alt text for images is tread the line between um, being descriptive and helping yourself with some keyword mentions. So my mom gave me other questions that I'll get to offline. And for y'all, y'all been leaving a lot of questions too. Um, I got, oh my gosh, I got so many good questions um, ahead of time. I wanted to jump to um, Nix. Nix asked a really good question over email to me. Um, how do you balance writing for SEO and writing for your audience? Amazing question. Like the question of the ages, especially as things like AI tools become more popular and people are using them right and left. Um, these kinds of tools, they can be misused really easily. Um, and, you know, we have an AI tool platform, Andy and I do, but I would never publish an AI generated article straight up. This is all about finding the balance of injecting yourself, your own humanity, your creativity, like your spirit into your content. And the same goes for writing for your audience and writing for SEO. So usually when I start my writing process, I, I write pure. I go for pure first. I don't give a shit about SEO when I'm doing a first draft because I want this to be what it should be first and foremost. So have that really clear sense. Develop your, develop your anchor of knowing what your content should be for your audience in order for it to be effective, for it to be useful, for it to be something that they land on and they say, holy shit, where do I get more of this content from so-and-so? How do I sign up for your email list? What else can I do with this person? And if you're able to give someone that feeling on your blog or through your video content, however you create content, if you can give someone that feeling, 
oh my gosh, they're going to come back for more, right? So I like to think of it as writing first and foremost for real people. Write what the article needs to be and then do the SEO thing. Um, come back, look for ways that you can weave in your keyword phrase more strategically to the header sections. Look for gaps. Again, I use a tool like ClearScope where it shows me, you know, you should mention this term this many more times. So I use that kind of feedback um, when I'm editing, when I'm optimizing. But again, that all happens after a first draft. Okay, Heather asked such a dope question. And again, by the way, y'all, please ask more questions in the comments. Please ask more questions. We want to get to some more. Um, I might be able to stick around a few minutes more as well. We'll see. But Heather asked such a good question. Um, for blog posts, does the length depend at all on the niche and the competition, right? Um, are blog posts between 700 and 1500 words sufficient enough for Google? The short answer is it depends. It does depend a lot upon the competition. And um, what you can do to answer that for yourself with your own specific niche is to go and look at how, how many words the top five articles are for the topic that you're considering writing about. And a tool, again, gosh, ClearScope, a tool like ClearScope will tell you in the insights section how many words all the top ranking articles are. So I use that piece of feedback all the time when I'm writing. So if I see every single article on a topic is around 3,000 words, I'm going to publish something that's probably around 3,000 words. Probably. Not always, but probably. Um, I certainly won't publish something that's 1,000 words because the feedback that the search engine results page is telling me is that they want something that's more in depth for this topic. And it's it's not always the rule. It's not like a guaranteed every single time. That's how it has to be. But again, generalization here. So always check this out. Um, see what your competitors are doing. That will give you insights and inspiration. Um, let's see. Ooh, let's go to some questions. Um, Abdul asks, any free alternatives of ClearScope? Such a great question. Andy already answered here, not that he's seen, not that I've seen either. Um, we're, just being honest, we're playing around with ways that we can make something like that that'll be free on my blog. I think, I think realistically, we're a little ways out from being able to launch something like that. But Abdul, if you want to send me an email, um, I'd be happy to let you know when we do roll something like that out. And maybe you can test it for us. That'd be super cool if you'd be up for something like that. All right. In my travels, should I revive a dormant blog? I specialize in travel and design. Moving to US, back to the US in 2016. I let it die. I then created a Wix blog. Big mistake. Now I want to revive the original one. Yeah, dang. I feel you on the Wix thing. Um, I know plenty of people who've gone down the Wix path. Um, only to kind of regret it later on. Um, it's not a very scalable way to build a blog, especially if you want to grow an audience and eventually, you know, build an email list and monetize and do things like that. So I feel you on that. Um, Andy and I have some experience with migrating Wix blogs to WordPress. If you're, if you're interested and want to drop us an email, just ryan at writeblogger.com. Um, we're happy to do whatever we can to help you out with that. Um, I can't promise we'll be able to help for sure, but we'd love to to be of use to you um, for sure. So should you revive a dormant blog? Back to your main question. If the blog is still live, if it's active, if you can reclaim it um, and you just haven't published on it since 2016, um, that would be a no-brainer, yes, for me. Like revive it for sure. Now, if it's been, you know, if it's been powered down, but you have all the content somewhere and you still have the main domain that it was on, um, I would also say yes to that. I would say, let's revive that shit. Um, go through the process of getting it hosted on WordPress. It's going to be worth it. Um, you'll have all these more uh, functionalities and op opportunities, options to build kind of a more scalable process around your blog in the future. So... Short answer, yes. Um, 
Elevated Mom. This may be our last question, guys. Um, thank you all, but Elevated Mom, last question. What is your process for researching a blog article? Time, resources. Um, you know, I'd say today's today's live session actually is a really good example of how I go about researching um, creating a blog post. And, you know, because I'm talking about it with y'all live here, that, that process is drawn out a bit longer. So usually when I'm researching how I want to approach something, whether I want to write about something, I'm going to start by doing this Google search. I'm going to start by listening to my own gut feeling. What should this topic be? And then I'll validate that with a Google search with some keyword research um, and then draw some insights into how other people are approaching the topic. And that takes me somewhere between five minutes and 10 minutes typically. And then it jumps over to first draft. So then I'll do the writing process. Um, oh my gosh, that can take plenty of hours, the writing. Um, sometimes if I'm really on one, I can write a post start to finish in like an hour or two, but my stuff's super in depth. So, you know, again, it does, it does take quite a while to come up with posts. Um, ooh, I see Ollie. Ollie, I really want to answer your question. So we're going to stick around for a minute. Um, page authority is required for ranking um, a particular post or page, but do backlinks to the homepage also significantly affect your rankings? Short answer, yes. Um, the younger your site is, the less links that your site currently has, the more impact you'll get from links to your homepage from other more authoritative sites. So, you know, Ollie, I recognize your name, right? Reach out to me, um, just Ryan at writeblogger.com. And if you, if you have a, a pitch for maybe a guest blog post that you would love to publish on my site, um, I'm always open to receiving pitches. This goes for anyone here. Um, I can't make promises, but I'm always open to pitches. And getting a link from an authoritative website, even if it's just to your homepage, will pretty much always be a positive. Um, it may not correspond to a direct increase in, hey, this post rose this many rankings because I got this link from a website to my homepage, um, but it's a numbers game. So, you know, over the course of years, you're going to want links from hundreds of authoritative websites uh, in your niche, ideally, but um, stuff that's a little bit outside is okay, too. It all contributes to building up your authority, which is, you know, it's a long-term game. And the more you can do to when you pitch guest posts and you publish guest posts on other websites, which, by the way, guest posting, best way to build lap backlinks. Um, you can check out on my blog. I have a guide about guest blogging. I have a guide about how to build backlinks. So check both those out for, for a much more detailed take um, on how to go about that. But again, the more you can do to um, publish content on guest sites with links to the pieces of articles on your site. So direct links to the posts that you want to rise in rankings. That's for sure the best practice. Um, wow. Thank you all. This has been awesome. I'm so pumped. Um, 143 comments. Thank you for being so engaged. Like really it, it fills my heart. It means a lot. Um, means a lot that y'all took time out of your day to join me here. And this was really special for me. So truly, 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 thank you. And if you want to email me, um, definitely hit me up. If you got questions, I'll, I'll start collecting questions now for the next live stream that we're going to do. We'll do it soon. And please, please, please also email me questions uh, or topic suggestions for the next live stream we do. I want to make this stuff as useful as possible for you guys. So, you know, send me an email ryan at writeblogger.com. Let me just type that into the chat. And here, um, send me an email, suggest topics. Um, something I'd love to do as well is over with writeblogger for those of y'all, I know I see some familiar faces here. So for those of y'all that are writeblogger users, I wanna do some blog teardowns for you guys. And it'd be super fun to do that live, share the insights, I'll give you recommendations on what I do to improve your blog, to get more traffic, to optimize your content better. Um, so I want to do super actionable stuff for y'all. So again, wow, thank you. Solaris, Ray, Gianluca, Rajiv, Jay, Gemma, Ali, Kelly, 
Renee, Alex, get out of here. Tracy, you guys are awesome. Oh man, thank you. This was the best possible way I could have started my day and sending so much love to y'all. I'll see you guys soon. And again, Ryan at Right Blogger, drop me any questions you got and we'll do it. Have a great day.